And you're going, but why doesn't the mother just not go in the water? Wouldn't that make more sense? And they go, well, ordinarily, yeah, but this is stupid. You see, in a stupid movie, everyone's stupid. The mother is stupid. The people that made it are stupid. But none of them are as stupid as you, because it is now 5.01, and you still think this is going to get better. You want to be there when I shed this skin? Oh, uh, I was watching Jaws the Revenge the other day. Which I hadn't seen since back in the 90s when TNT was practically the Jaws channel. They had a Jaws sequel, like, playing pretty much all hours of the day with a short break for Mama's family. But, so, so I pop it in because I picked it up recently. And I realized I never actually watched this movie from beginning to end. I just saw it in chunks with commercial breaks. Sometimes interchangeably with Jaws 2 and 3. And if people say it's the worst Jaws, the worst of the Jaws sequels, I have to disagree. I, I think 3 is the worst. Uh, not that Revenge doesn't have things working against it, but, uh, like, for one, Jaws 4 is the lowest body count. There's the opening kill, and then there's the girl in the banana boat. Uh, the Caribbean dude, Jake, gets eaten in the climax but like everything else Mario Van Peebles is in, the shark dies shortly after, and somehow he manages to survive, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, better for the story if he died, and for the movie over overall. But uh, anyway, I, especially because like this shark is like two pounds shy of being a fucking megalodon, like, there's just no way this dude should have lived. Anyway, um, <clears throat> the other issue is that it, it kind of treats Jaws 2 and 3 like they never happened. And they, they kind of do that with movies nowadays where, like, they go, let's do a sequel, or let's do a remake of the sequel. Uh, Jaws 4 was trying to do that, except they were trying to get rid of 3, but they don't... There's no mention of anything that happened in Jaws 2, so I have to kind of conclude that they're getting rid of that, too. So I'm surprised they didn't just call it Jaws. I mean, they, like, you would think they would bring it up. This dude, uh, Michael Brody, who's like the the oldest of the two Brody kids from the original, uh, he's almost been eaten by a shark three times, one of which is a, a happened at SeaWorld. It's like a major international story. It somehow is never brought up here. He could have accomplished it with a throwaway line, but uh, but that's also why they didn't call it Jaws 4. They just called it Jaws the Revenge. Because they were trying to delete Jaws 3D from everyone's uh, memory. But And Jaws 3D has a, a really good premise also, like the shark attacking SeaWorld. That, that's great, but it, this the movie's so fucking boring it's boring as hell and the shark looks like shit and the jaws the revenge at least keeps you kind of interested and the shark looks looks awesome uh the thing i find really amusing about jaws the revenge is how no one has understood the plot of the fucking movie like it's the most misunderstood plot like everybody that has ever talked about this movie thinks this is the plot mother gets on a plane in long island new york to get away from the shark Flies to the Bahamas. Are you with me here? An ideal place to avoid a fish. <laughs> Small island surrounded by water. When she gets there, guess what? Not only has the shark discovered that they have travel plans to go to the Bahamas, but to boot, he has beat the jet to the Bahamas. All right, and now if you need something that's not a stand-up comedy bit and a, a joke, which is a, it's a funny, it's a hilarious bit, like this whole segment, but anyway... But yeah, every critic, this is their take on this movie. The most unique in the series, as this is the movie that sees the Jaws shark seeking revenge. Yep. This time round, Jaws is one vengeful beast who will stop at nothing to munch away at the Brody family. Why is everyone so fucking stupid? Okay, like, I, I don't know if we're just running with the joke. And so I hate to be the guy that wrecks the joke that has gone on for 30 fucking years, but at some point you have to stop and go, we are joking about that, right? Okay, there's more than one shark in the ocean. And it's been established in two other movies that Amity Island has a bit of a shark problem. 
So, the original is like the first time a shark migrated to the area. It just happens to be fucking gigantic to boot. Very plausibly reproduced and made more little sharks in the area. Adding to the great white problem in, in this area's ec uh, ecosystem. Okay, the shark that eats Sean Brody at the beginning of Jaws of the Revenge is not the same shark for the rest of the movie. The shark is setting up... This shark is setting up his own franchise down in the Bahamas, and then here comes this crazy bitch, Moby Dick, and him because some asshole he doesn't even know ate her kid up in New England. And this is where Jaws of the Revenge does kind of rise above being the worst of the, the four. It, it almost competes with Jaws 2. I'm, I'm saying almost for being the better of the sequels. Uh, Jaws was about more than just, like, the killer shark. Like, in the book, there was this whole thing involving Mayor Vaughn and the corrupt, shady dealings with the local mafia. In the movie, he's just dealing with regular bureaucratic bullshit. But there was a class warfare element going on between Hooper and Quint. The main fight, really... Mayor Vaughn is actually the villain. The only way he can stop Mayor Vaughn... Uh, from doing any more damage or fucking his life up anymore, is to go out and kill this damn fish. So, the, the shark really isn't the... Like, people have been watching Jaws of Revenge from the point of view of the shark every time they've watched it. That's the only way you could come to the conclusion that the shark is the one getting the revenge. It's not. It's Ellen Brody is the one getting the revenge. It, at this, at the movie's core, it's about a woman grieving over her son and finding closure by going Liam Neeson on this shark that happened to be coincidentally crossing her path. I was out there, I was looking for any fish bastard I could find. Punch out a dolphin if it looked at me sideways. Ain't nothing but a ton of fish just to keep up my bloodlust. Uh, I'll take the biggest negative of, of Jaws the revenge it's really the climax and it doesn't really have one like the shark goes down way easier than any other member of the jaws family that came before it which i i think is where this movie really kind of dropped the ball because like it never really gets hard to kill the shark like if they had to put some time into it at the end like if they had to drift out there for like a night uh like, the shark ate the plane and then, you know, didn't come back. And you give all the characters on the boat, like these four, Michael Caine, Lorraine Gary, uh, Lance Guest, and Mario Van Peebles, you give them this moment on the boat that is that is an echo of them on the Orca in the, the first one, where they're all comparing scars, and this would be a good time to bring up Jaws 2 or... I guess you're disregarding three, but bring up, this would be a good time to bring up Jaws. Yeah, I got this scar and a shark attack, and then have him kind of vaguely tell the story of Jaws 2. Like, yeah, me and a bunch of friends were out sailing, and we got got attacked by a shark that was as big as this one, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, you have Michael Caine tell the story. He's like, well, I got a scar, not from a shark. Well, it was from a shark, but not a. It was a lone shark, you see. A well, long story short, I only have one testicle left. It's some shit like that, and then you, you'd have you'd have uh, Mario Van Peebles' character kind of feel left out because he doesn't have any scars or a cool story to tell because he's just been kind of nerding it up uh, in college and classrooms and whatnot. And then this would also pay off, have paid off, like, when he illogically survives the shark attack at the end. And then we have, you could have a scene where, like, this would have been the time to have Ellen Brody give, like, her own version of, like, the SS Indianapolis story. Not the same story, obviously, but, and it's not even really about the shark, or tied to a shark attack, so much as it's about the personal cost of all the shit that has come around dealing with that shark in the first movie. Brody in the second one loses his job. Like, he gets cut from being the chief of police. Uh, he's made out to be a laughing stock, even though he's already killed one of these fucking things in a previous movie. Still going through the same crap. Uh, losing his job. That has had to have some kind of long-lasting effect, not to mention his health. Uh, as she also credits him in this movie, 
credits the sharks with being like what killed her husband, you know, like the stress and fear of dealing with the shark and the post-traumatic stress, blah, blah, blah. Every problem in her life for the past decade can all be traced back to that goddamn fish. So killing this shark is really, it's a form of closure. Like you can even have her tell a story about, and you could take this from the original book, you could set it like where, when Bro set it to have happened like when Brody uh, and Quint Hooper were all out there killing that first shark in the first movie, is have one of Mayor Vaughn's goons, uh, mob guys, come up and break the cat's neck in front of their kid. Because that happens in the book. Uh, this dude just pulls up into the yard, picks up the Brody family's cat, and snaps its neck in front of Sean Brody. Have her tell that story as like... Like, if they had had her tell that story, and it's like, I never... I didn't want to throw anything on, and when, by the time Martin came back, the fish was dead, it was all kind of over with, so it just became this thing that me and Sean knew about, and now Sean is dead, and blah, blah, blah. Like, they had a good setup that they could have did something like that, and they, they should have. Like, if they had taken a second, the people might not have thought that the shark swam from New England to the fucking Bahamas... After, I guess, it tapping her phone and figuring out how, like, what her travel plans were and, you know, that way the, and is it spood feeding the audience to, to do that? Yeah, but perhaps they needed it because the viewers of this movie are evidently dumber than this movie they've been calling stupid for the past 30 years. Uh, it's at least a harmless misreading of the material.